Carbon arc lamps were the first widely used type of electric lamps and the first form of commercially successful electric lamps in the year 1800. These lamps were very bright and could light a large length of the street and a large factory interior. They became popular in the 1870s because it was cheaper to light streets with arc lamps rather than gas or oil lamps. This model of carbon arc lamps was designed by Nikola Tesla in the year 1886. The interesting thing about this lamp is that when the arc reaches an abnormal length due to a lack of feed, it automatically removes the lamp from the circuit, and when the rod drops and the carbons come into contact, it automatically inserts the lamp into the circuit. In this video, we will see how Nikola Tesla designed the automatic mechanism of the carbon arc lamp, and that too in the year 1886. So let's start our journey. In this design of carbon arc lamp, the carbon rod got consumed during the operation of the lamp. So in order to get full bright white light, it needs to be readjusted after every short period of time. If this readjustment is not done on time, then the arc becomes too long, which causes the lamp to operate inefficiently. And after some time, the arcing also stops due to which no light is emitted from the lamp. Therefore, adjusting the carbon rods almost became like a full-time job in the city. In this other design of carbon arc lamp, there is a lever connected with the carbon rods. This lever feeds the carbon rods as they get consumed. A force continuously acts on this lever in the opposite direction and maintains the length of the arc. The force acting on this lever depends upon the strength of the current, and any change in the strength of the current causes a vibration of the lever and a corresponding flicker in the light. Also, in these types of lamps, clockwork-like retarding mechanisms are used, which again increases the cost of maintenance. Therefore, to overcome these problems, Nikola Tesla designed this model of carbon arc lamp. Let us see how this carbon arc lamp works. At the start, the carbons are in contact. Now, when a direct current is supplied, the current passes from the positive binding post E to the lamp frame. Note that only the positive binding post is in contact with the lamp frame and the negative binding post is insulated from the lamp frame. This current travels from the frame to the upper carbon holder rod and then to the upper carbon and then to the lower carbon and then through insulated return wire and then from there through the part X dash of the wire on the main magnet to the negative binding post. Note that we will call a certain length of wire as X dash and the rest will be called as P dash. Now upon passage of current, the main magnet is energized and attracts the clamping armature. This clamping armature has two gripping jaws present inside. Therefore, when this clamping armature swings towards the magnet, these gripping jaws grip the rod tightly. At the same time, we can see that this energized magnet also attracts this armature lever. Therefore, this armature lever is pulled down and the carbons are separated. Note. In pulling down the armature lever, the main magnet is assisted by the shunt magnet. This shunt magnet is magnetized by magnetic induction from this main magnet. You can see that these two armatures act as keepers for the main magnet and shunt magnet, and due to this, both the magnets with either one of the armatures may be considered as one horseshoe magnet, which can also be termed a compound magnet. Now, the fine wire receives a portion of current because the resistance of the main magnet has been increased. Note, initially, the magnetic induction from the main magnet is such that it produces opposite poles on the corresponding ends of the shunt magnet, but the direction of current traversing the helices is such that it produces similar poles on the corresponding ends of both the magnets. Therefore, as soon as the fine wire is traversed by sufficient current, the magnetism of the whole compound magnet is diminished. Now, with regard to this armature and the operation of the lamp, the bottom pole of the main magnet is termed as clamping pole 
and the bottom pole of the shunt magnet is termed as releasing pole. As the carbon burns away, the resistance of the main magnet increases, so the current flowing through it decreases, and correspondingly, the strength of the magnetic field produced by it also decreases, but the current flowing through fine wire increases, and thus, the strength of the magnetic field, which produces similar poles, also increases. Due to this, overall magnetism of the shunt magnet decreases in proportion. So, we can see that attraction force on both ends of this armature lever decreases. This causes the armature lever to swing, and thus this armature descends gradually under the weight of the moving parts until this end of the armature lever strikes a stop, which is present on the top plate. The adjustment is such that, when this takes place, there is sufficient magnetic force of attraction on this armature, and the carbon holding rod is gripped securely by the jaws. Now, we can see that the armature lever cannot rotate further, but the carbon continues to burn. So, as the carbon burns further, the resistance of the main magnet continues to increase and current through it continues to decrease, due to which magnetic attraction on the armature continues to decrease. On the other hand, current through the shunt magnet continues to increase, due to which magnetic field in the same direction continues to increase. Now, a time comes when the attraction force due to the shunt magnet on this armature exceeds the attraction force due to the main magnet. Therefore, the clamping armature moves slightly towards the shunt magnet. As soon as this happens, the hold of the gripping jaws on the carbon holding rod loosens and the rod drops a little, shortening the arc. Now, the resistance of the main magnet is reduced and thus more current flows through it and the fine wire receives less current. So, it again gets magnetized by magnetic induction. Now, the carbon holding rod is clamped again and slightly raised if necessary. This entire process of clamping and releasing this armature and rotation of this armature lever continues until the carbons are consumed. Note that this entire process is so smooth and sensitive that, for the greatest part of the time, the movement of the rod cannot be detected without some actual measurement. Now, suppose there are some imperfections in the rod due to which the rod drops too far to make the arc too short or even bring the carbons in contact, then a large current passes through the main magnet and a very small amount of current passes through the fine wires of shunt magnet. Due to this, the main magnet pulls the armature lever down to a greater distance, thus separating the carbons to a greater distance. Another problem may arise. Suppose the rod sticks in the guides. In this case, the arc reaches a great length until it finally breaks. Then the light goes out. Now, the resistance of the main magnet becomes very high and no current passes through them and the entire current flows through fine wire. Therefore, due to heavy current, the fine wire may get injured. So to prevent such accidents, Nikola Tesla provided an automatic cutout mechanism. Suppose, due to failure of feed, the arc reaches a certain predetermined length such an amount of current E is diverted through fine wire that the polarity of the compound magnet is reversed. Now, the clamping armature is attracted towards the releasing pole, so it moves towards the releasing pole and strikes it. As soon as the contact is established, the current travels in this path. Now here we can see that current flows in the opposite direction in the main magnet and changes its polarity. The lamp is thus cut out, as long as the carbons are separated. Now, in this design of Nikola Tesla, if the carbon falls and comes into contact, then the arc should start again. Therefore, Nikola Tesla proportion the resistance of the part P' dash 
and the number of convolutions of the wire upon the main magnet so that, when the carbons come in contact, a sufficient amount of current is diverted through the carbons and the part X dash to destroy or neutralize the magnetism of the compound magnet. Then this armature, which has a slight tendency to approach the clamping pole, comes out of contact with the releasing pole. As soon as this happens, the current through the part P dash is interrupted, and the whole current passes through the part X dash. The main magnet is now strongly magnetized, and this armature is attracted, and the rod is clamped. At the same time, this armature lever is pulled down out of its normal position, and the arc is started. In this way, the lamp cuts itself out automatically when the arc gets too long and reinserts itself automatically in the circuit if the carbons drop together. In this way, Nikola Tesla designed this carbon arc lamp.